Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Mile High Game Guys Board Gaming Podcast. I'm your host Adrian. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. <clears throat> and we're coming to you with another episode of the regular episodes that we regularly do. Brought to you by you. Brought, brought to you by me. Mm-hmm. Or the patrons that give us money. Yes. Or the letter U. You know, whatever you need to make you give us a dollar. Indeed. <laughs> That's the bare minimum of supporting the show. One dollar. Patreon.com slash my high game guys. Boom. There we go. Pre banter out of the way. Is it? This is a podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast. About board gaming. It's hot. Mm-hmm. About board gaming. About board gaming. It's like board, ramblings. Boards gaming. I boards believe. gaming. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, it is hot. It is. It hot. is. We are in the middle. So the the pre banter, banter, pre show banter, <laughs> pre game banter. I don't know. Can be just real quick that we are at the beginning of an extended heat wave here in Denver, and it's gonna fucking suck. Like the, I can feel the AC going, but really all that's doing is keeping me vaguely like Less bearable sweaty. from the knee oh. down. Oh, that must be nice to be able to at least feel the AC. <laughs> well, you walked in with like a flannel on. No, so... it's just, yeah. I do Look. not understand the vest that you were wearing. <laughs> like, it looked nice and all, uh-huh. but it is not the right time. I don't like having shit in my pockets, so. That's fair. Yeah. And unfortunately, they're, I don't, they don't make very I, many, like. I, s- according to the bar I was at the other night, uh-huh. fanny packs are back in. According to the clientele of the bar I was at the other oh, night, gotcha. fanny packs are back in. Uh, no. Was I was I part of that clientele? Was I there? You were not. Oh well, there we just go. Telling you, you, <laughs> okay, gotcha. they, you could you could join that. Trend. I could join. Um, Chris from Boards and Swords uh, in in chat wanted to know: Is the heat wave like seventy? Um, hundred and one Celsius? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it is. I wish it was only seventy. My AC is set at seventy, and my AC is struggling to maintain that temperature. Yep. Uh, it's brutal. Um, but that's 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 the pre pre banter. Um, this is a board gaming podcast, and so we're talking about board games, and so let's dive into uh, what we've been playing. That would be 37 degrees Celsius. 37. See, I was close. <laughs> Almost half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, for what we've been playing, uh, there wasn't a stream of a uh, game last week. Uh, that's because that was uh, our on the 10 episode-ish, uh, and so- One we, late on the 10 episode. Yeah. And so we did. Uh, we did the top ten. We did the top ten games that got us through the pandemic. Um, it was a good, good episode. Uh, you can watch it on Twitch. Uh, it's currently the replay that's going. Uh, well, by the time you're hearing this, it probably won't be. Um, it'll be the. This will be the like the the main replay. Oh. But you can go and see see it. It'll, it'll be, be there for a couple weeks. Um, and then by the time this is out, it should be out. I'm planning on editing it after we finish this recording. Yeah. So. We, we got a good early start on recording today, and so uh, I'm planning on editing the top 10 immediately after this. Uh, so that was last week's stream, not a, not a board game stream. This Friday, we're going to- A top be... 10 list. A top very, 10 list. very popular. Yeah. Everyone loves top 10s. They, they, yep. they do. They are some of our most popular episodes. Right behind reviews, um, which we also so, haven't done in forever. <laughs> some reviews. Some, some reviews get no traction. Sometimes they're just yeah. like, yeah, why the fuck is anybody talking popular about Popular games, unsurprisingly. Yes. Popular but. things are popular. Yeah. Who could have predicted this? Mm-hmm. Weird. Um, speaking of not us. Speaking of not us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this Friday, we will be streaming a board game. We're going to be streaming Clinic. Uh, I got it right here. Clinic. Uh, it's the deluxe edition. It's all about I, makeup. I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> sure. Um, I don't believe we're going to be really doing any of the add-ons or expansions. Um, might do some of the really basic stuff that's functionally no different from the base game. Yeah. But I'm not going to throw any like crazy modules yeah. on there. No zombies. Both of you, both no of zombies. you, both of you have played it before. Yes. And I watched you guys play some of it and I'm trying to like, do I want to actually learn, like actually play it beforehand so I have a better grasp or do I want to try and rely on that, that beginner's luck that I tend to have? So we'll see. Yeah. Well, you let me know, and I'll, I'll teach you Wednesday your way if you victory. want. Yeah. Um, I'll teach you Wednesday if you want. Um, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, so for actual uh, games that we did, in fact, play, uh, all three of us were at game night again this week. We we're back to doing our in-person game nights. Uh, which, this was a, a very successful one. Yeah. This was easily one of the best ones we've had in like two years, I'd say. Yeah. Um, you know, going back to even strange always had a lot of people, but yeah. yeah, this felt like more like a regular strange one yeah. than it did just Correct. like, correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Apparently yeah. <laughs> that's just how you said it now. <laughs> you know, it. I'm just trying to change things up. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. yeah. It's 2021. 
Stop trying to make Karecha think, yeah. Zach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we were back at Strange. Uh, this was also had the benefit of this was our second game night back, and this one had more than 24 hours notice, uh, which helps for organizing a yeah, game Yeah, weird. I know. Uh, people were really excited about it. Strange is one of uh, the favorite venues of the group. Uh, and it is central to the Denver area, which yep. helps. Yeah, it's easily one of the ones closest to downtown that we go to regularly. Um, cause you can't get really in downtown and do one <laughs> because no. it is far too busy. Yeah. I, I do miss the days of being able to go to Breckenridge brewery right there Which by the is stadium. Like cherry cricket or something. Yeah. 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 I mean, and the, the one or two times where I was like, Oh, right. There's a, uh, there's a, there's a Rocky game. So normally the $5 parking is like $40. So yeah. those were always I, fun. I started paying attention to the Rocky schedule a lot more when I was scheduling those yes. game nights. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we were at game night. Mm-hmm. And we played games. Yeah, uh, we all we all played some games. It's it's a shocker that the game night was the crutch that we needed to make us actually play games for this board gaming podcast. That weren't yeah. with also just us too. Like, yes. True, true. I don't think we played more than one game together. Correct. I don't think I. Well, I, we did because we all played Draftosaurus. Correct. Yes. Which I'll start talking about Draftosaurus because I played two games and they were games I played last week. So, uh, they, um, um. So yeah, basically the exact same things. So Draftosaurus, we played with some new expansions. Yes. Um, two I, had, of them. I had picked them up when I got the base game because they were fairly cheap. And then uh, I, I tossed them into the box when I got there because they were still in their own boxes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the two expansions, there was uh, the Pterodactyls and the Mountain Region, which goes at the top of the board. And then like the Lagoon the and river. the Plesiosaurs, the river and the yeah. Plesiosaurs. Um, bridges uh and so the way they, those worked is so the for the pterodactyls you added uh two pterodactyls per player uh into the bag uh and then at the start of the game before anybody drew their hands everybody drew two random dinosaurs and put them on two of the spots on the pterodactyl region the and mountain the, region. the mountain region and the rule was that pterodactyls were the only dinosaurs that could go in those mountains and that was the only place pterodactyls could go And it was basically divided into three separate little areas that you had to progress. So your first pterodactyl had to go in the first area, zone one, zone A. Uh, After that, putting at least one in zone A unlocks zone B. So you could still go in zone A or you could now move to zone B. And then once you placed one in zone B, that unlocked zone C so you could go there. Uh, There's only five spots total up there. Um, So even with, you know... Like in ours, there were what five people playing six, five, yeah, five, so max. ten pterodactyls. So you know there was enough to max everything out um, for two people in theory. Yeah. Um, a key rule that we didn't play with that did come into like at the end when we were looking at how to score. You score points for the person to your left. That was number of pterodactyls. I think that was that was, op- that, that was the opposite side. There was a space. oh, that's right. Because then we there's, found out that because there's was a side wrong. A and a side B. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't get a lot of pterodactyls, all you need is two, and then you can score, you know, three points per to the person to your left. Yeah. Uh, that's right, because because we got all excited about it, and then we changed it, and I think it switched some people in the middle score a little bit. Yeah. But the winners uh, and, uh, you know, last place did not change. I think I didn't get last because of it. I think Lance and I swapped our, like, fourth and fifth place. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, so so the pterodactyls that that's all they did. Um, the spots we'll talk and, about. I mean, one of the unlocks was like you get to ignore the die for the rest of the game. That's the that's the C. It, yeah, there's that, one spot in that C realm, and that's what it is. And that's it's, what both of you got, right? Yeah, both of us. I got it, I got it on like it. the second draft because yeah. I put a pterodactyl in an egg, which unlocked and went to the next one. So all I had to do was draft one more pterodactyl, and boom, no more die for me. Yeah. Um, and and the two spots in one spot in A and one spot in B. That there's two, there's two go, options. That's where those dinosaurs go when you first draw them out of the bag. Yeah. And then if you place a pterodactyl there, you get it, that dinosaur and get to immediately place it with no restrictions. Correct. And so that's what Jeff was saying. Like your your starting draw of two dinosaurs included a pterodactyl. Yes. So it's like, oh, I place a pterodactyl and then I take this pterodactyl that I just got to place and I place it over here. Yep. And yeah. Boom. Boom, boom. Worked real great for you. Yes. Um, the bottom area, the river area and the plesiosaurs, the way they work, plesiosaurs can only be placed in the river. Yep. Uh, on your main, they start on your main board in that little, like one spot. And then each board. The corpse river. Yeah. Uh, each board, uh, for those is unique. 
Um, and actually, the other ones are too. They the have other one other is unique, unique because things. one of the spots is get an extra point for each of a type of dinosaur, and each one of the five boards is unique to the different five different types of base dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, the rivers, uh, their uniqueness comes in that the river has like five bridges on it, I think four, something like that on the, on the one yeah. side and uh, the other side has, uh, a little split off lagoon that I didn't really look at what's special about that. It just, it, it, it cuts over faster. They can't move anymore, but I think it's like more points than like the second spot, but not more points than the third spot. Yeah. Um, but so, so it's a good, if you like get them there later in the game. And you don't have to worry about getting them all the way to the end, you know, at first thing or something. Right. If you start running out of time, it's a good spot to shove them over into. Yeah. Uh, and the way those work is the bridges have a, a pair of dinosaurs printed on them. And that's where the uniqueness of the boards, everybody's, which dinosaurs are on, which bridges are mixed up. Yep. But whenever you place a dinosaur that's on that bridge on your board, any plesiosaurs that were waiting, then go under that bridge and go and hang up at the next bridge. Which is usually one point more per Yeah dinosaur there so the base corpse river at the top is one point <laughs> then if they get past the first bridge and the stink of bodies is starting to dis dissipate you're mm -hmm. at two points yes and eventually you can get to like four or five at the very it's end your, you know your corpse dams yeah <laughs> um so that's uh that's the plesiosaur board um it it's it's the most straightforward of the two yes I think. for sure um the pterodactyl has a little bit more decision points and interaction yeah to the main game but um, it was a good game. We taught three new players. Yeah. Or no, two, because the three of us played. Correct. And it was Megan and Ryan. Lance. Lance. Uh, one of our bearded friends. We've got a lot of them. One of our many bearded friends. Many of them, yeah. Um, Some you don't even recognize. Because they didn't used to have beards. No. Very different. Um, I ended up winning, which was a pleasant change of pace. It's been <laughs> a long time since I won a game. Uh, I felt very happy with my, my board. I went very heavy initially on the- And we did have to look up because in the rules, it doesn't say with the plesiosaurs to draw an extra dinosaur. Yeah. Because we were going to be off by one. So yeah. So we needed to be drawing seven each instead of six each. Yep. Yep. So the pterodactyl rules do cover that you add the two pterodactyls, but then everybody draws two on their board. So, so that you stay counteracts. Even. Yep. The plesiosaurs, that rule book does not mention that everybody needs to draw one extra. And there is additional rule I saw. I didn't read the rule and I don't remember. Like I glanced at it, but I don't not enough to retain it. For the two-player game, mm -hmm. you have to do something different again still because the two-player game, the drafting is, I guess, quite a bit different. Because you go over four rounds instead of two rounds. That would make sense. Yeah. Um, I liked it. Um, I don't know if I really felt like the expansions added all that much. I would agree with that, yeah. Um, they are very simple, but the base game is also very simple. It, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure where I feel on like how necessary they really would be. I'd need to play, probably play it both ways again like play it again well, i also want to try it on the other sides too on everything because we still haven't tried even the, the winter one. yeah the winter side on the dinosaurs yeah. so i think that uh offers a lot of interesting uh stuff the the fact that it is completely double-sided mm -hmm. uh and the plesiosaur side seems pretty similar you have that little bit of the decision of do i get the slightly higher points early and pass up getting more points in a longer yeah plan um i didn't really look much at the uh pterodactyl board the ability to be like i'm gonna get a bunch of points for my neighbor it who just, went heavy on terry yeah pterodactyls and i think the cool. the very high end is just like get a pterodactyl to stage three here's seven points or something like that yeah gotcha which is the high end for well the medium end yeah for anywhere that has just like one dinosaur in the spot like have the most or don't have any those usually all just give seven anyways so yeah get a third pterodactyl you get seven points um yeah so that was draft of source uh went well i won megan got second on her first play so even a newbie did very well yeah uh and i don't remember what order the rest of you three were at i was at third and then they were tied for but, fourth and fifth yeah i think we were fourth and fifth lance was fourth i was fifth and then his score didn't change because no one to his left had any yeah exactly. but mine didn't or something or maybe his did and mine didn't i think and I just he just he went down and I stayed the same, but he went down enough to where I got fourth or something like that. Yeah, I yeah. can't remember. Um, uh, and then I played it again later in like a four player game. Okay. Do you want to talk about that one? So we'll just get all the draft source yeah, out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Anything uh, specific? Nothing special happened. Okay. It was another game of draft source. It's <laughs> cool. it's it's still a very quick, easy. Did you? What was it with both expansions? And was it the same sides? 
uh, it was different sides for the mountains, uh, but it was the same side for everything else. Okay. And uh, it's still very quick, easy teach. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I don't see any reason to not include it when you're teaching somebody the game if you have for the sure. expansions. But at least on the one playthrough we had, I felt the same afterwards. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wasn't like, holy shit, these expansions are great and I want to play with them all the time. Yeah. They're very small. Yeah. Um, More modules than anything. Re- re- yeah, definitely. Uh, then the other game I played, uh, same as the week before, was Fresh Fish. Uh, we played it with some different people. We played it at, I think, a lot a light, uh, a higher player count. Played it at a five? Yeah. Okay. Um, didn't really change much. Uh, the placement was fuck awful. Uh, so Chris decided to be, you know, clever with the placements. Uh, he was like, hey, all right, you guys don't know how to play. Here, everybody take one of these cards and put it somewhere on the board, and we'll just go with that. Uh, I don't know how he did it in our game. I think he tried to make them a little bit, like, kind of even and, like, interesting. Uh, the way he ended up doing it. Are, are you talking about the actual boards themselves or the placement of the... The, the placement of the carts on the board? Oh, he just gave them to me. He said spread them out evenly. Oh, and, I okay. did, and I was like, okay, boop, 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 there we go. So he at least gave you the clarifier of evenly. Yeah. He did not give that clarifier to our group. So they ended up with weird clusters. And the way one of the boards was, it was like four wide. And it ended up with like a cart and a cart and a cart. And so, like, it made this weird path where it was, like, the first time somebody placed something, it blocked, like, everything down there. And, like, three people were like, great, well, that just jumped to 12 point. Like, no matter what I do, that's maxed out at 12. Right. Uh, and what was best is it was Chris who did it. Like, he was trying to fuck me and block me. And then we realized that that placement filled in, like, fucking everything over there, which also fucked him and uh, fucked Wes, I think. Paul was pretty set over there. And it didn't fuck me as much. Because I had another one where I was like, oh, well, that guarantees that if I don't put anything there, that will be that fish spot. And that'll yep. that'll be be a little bit better. Um, but it uh, some of the other layout stuff on this one was weird. Like there are huge wide open tracts where nothing really happened much. Huge tracts of land. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, very much so. Um, and then there was definitely one point where we realized we hadn't been keeping up with roads quite right. Uh, and when we caught him up, it really was a lot of people were like, well, shit, I would have done things different. Like, And yeah. it was definitely that way for multiple turns. So like, I should have known that it was going to be that way. Um, ultimately, I think on that one, I pulled off second. Uh, I don't think I got first. That's I've sound- been getting a lot no, of I know Paul got, that, I got, Paul got first on that one. Oh, yeah, Paul did get first. Because yeah. uh, Paul was the only one not super fucked by Chris's dumb mistake in that corner. Ah. Uh. Um, and then Paul did fuck me out of another one, uh, very knowingly, where he's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, hundred percent gonna force you to take a shit ton of points to get to this one." Yep. Uh, I want to play on the other side. Um, that one you can actually block things off; it doesn't auto fill quite as much. Uh, the big difference there is that then at the end of the game, you use the back side of the tiles, which is minus two points per tile instead of one point per tile, or it costs two points per tile instead of one point, and you want low scores. Yeah. So functionally similar. Um, and you have to use those to fill in any, like, to make openings in the roads, to, like, complete things to where you can actually get to the fish. And so it can really make you have a much higher score. Gotcha. But um, also that one has, like, a flow chart for how things collapse and yeah, uh, turn into roads. So Yep. So I want to try it and just see. Um, I still, I, I like it. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's fine. I'm not, it's not one I'm like dying to go out of my way to find or track down, especially now that I know Chris has it. So anytime I feel like playing it, I can just be like, Hey Chris, bring, bring that to game night, yo. Um, my enjoyment, I think I talked about last week was like a you. And so that you is like, it was like somebody did it in kind of cursive and it's got a little tail that just kind of mm-hmm. dips and then flattens. And that's like, gotcha. good. It's not like, Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh my gosh, I hate it. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's like, I like it. So, um, that's fresh fish. That's, that's it for, uh, for the games I played. I then presented, proceeded to spend the next like two to three hours just getting ripped, uh, talking to people. I was quite drunk. Megan found it very humorous. <laughs> I remember. And then I was like, Hey Megan, how's being DD tonight? And she didn't understand what I was talking about. And I was like, designated driver. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, DD, like D and D. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, no, DD. You are clearly DD tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're getting a, an Uber or Lyft home. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so that, uh, so yeah, it was it was fun. Getting getting ripped drunk and talking to friends I hadn't seen in like a year was nice. 
a lot of a lot of familiar faces showing up at Strange. Yeah, so that was nice. Uh, what about you guys? What else did you play uh, this week slash game night? Zach, you wanna? Sure. Uh, so after the game of Drachosaurus, uh, Chris and I played a g- game of cribbage on my fancy cribbage board that I had a terrible record on, and I won. So it, it looks like enough time of not playing it has gotten rid of that. That's well, good. I'm glad the pandemic helped. Or at least you. one yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> glad the pandemic. No, it's gonna be all games from now on, <laughs> Jeff. Just not not yeah. just the one. Yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see if it starts to remember. It's or true maybe form. I just never played again. It's just I got a hundred percent afterwards. So. <laughs> You know, uh, and then after that, we played but stealing my strategy. <laughs> so Kobe Akawa, I played that. Um, and well, let me rephrase that. I participated in the game. I see. <laughs> um, I outside of the first. So we were playing with the new rules of that one, which normally in the beginning, it's, you know, a card gets flipped over. Um, there's total of cards one through 15. Everybody has one card in their hand. And then there's a card that's flipped over. um, And then everybody has a chance to either draw a card and replace the card in their hand or draw and replace the card in the center. And then after everybody goes, then everybody's going to bet. And what you're trying to bet is who has the highest total card in their hand with the um, addition that whoever has the lowest card gets to add the center card to their total. So if, if we had... If you had six, I had seven, and Jeff had eight, but the three was in the center, you would get six plus three or nine, so you would actually win that one. Okay. Um, but if I had like a four, if you had a four I'd and get a three, seven, and so I wouldn't exactly. End up okay. Yeah. Um, and so out uh, the difference between the first edition and this edition that we were playing is that in the first one, you just bet one coin each round. Okay. And it's you're either you're in or out, but. In the um, the new edition, you can bet more if you want. You can also raise somebody, and it's just you're waiting towards you're just waiting for the end of the round, like everybody to get a chance to be at the same level money, right? So you bet one, I bet one, Jeff bets two, then each of us get a chance to put in money if we want, or we can just bow out. I feel like I played the old version. Yeah, of you this. probably did. Yeah. Um, and so when I said I participated, what I mean is I had one card that was. Bet one in, but then someone raised, and I was like, well, I'm not going to beat that. And I bowed out. Uh, There's a total of seven rounds of betting. I did not bet in a single one of those because every single time I was looking, I was like, well, someone's going to have a card that's higher than me or lower than me that would make their number higher than this. So I passed. So I I ended up passing the entire time. And it was every single time it would have been correct that I would not have won. Huh. Yeah. So, so then is it like whoever has the most money at the end? Yes, it's whoever has the most money at the end. So Did, you're not betting at all strategy? I Did got third. Start, I got you, third. So uh, Chris made a big bet of everything in the end and lost it all. Ah. Uh, and so I was like, yeah, I got th- I got third with my just being present. So <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, we played uh, No Thanks, which, you know, is another another great betting game. Um, cause we were playing it and then I was like, oh man, this is, this is making me want to play no thanks. And I was like, Chris, have you ever played no thanks? He's like, no. And I'm like, all right, well fucking playing it after this. Um, and you know, this is another betting game of, uh, a card comes out. You want negative points in this one and the cards are anywhere from three to five, uh, three to 35. And you have tokens in your hands that on your turn, you either take the card or you use one of the tokens, say no thanks. And you put it on there and it goes to the next person. Uh, the tokens are worth negative points, which is yep. good. So you want to have them, but they're also used to actually bid. Bid because you don't want like a 35 and then like 24 and like these and, and all those. So the nice thing on this one, though, is that yeah, cause it's almost like a, it's really more of a reverse bid. Like if yes. you run out of tokens, you can't yes. you can't say no thanks. You mm-hmm. have to take it and whatever Correct. tokens yes. are on it. So, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, sometimes if you see like the 33 or, you know, whatever out, like it'll go and it can get like 20 tokens on it. And you're like. Uh, I'll take that 33, but it lets me get all these tokens that lets me not get other cards. Because the worst thing is whenever you're like, there's a card in there I don't want, but I don't have any tokens, so you have to take it. Yeah. And the uh, interesting thing on this game is that any cards that are adjacent to one of the cards that you have, you basically stack them together to make a straight, and it's only whatever the lowest card is. Mm -hmm. is So if you have a 20 through 16, then... You're going to score 16 points. You're only going to score 16 points. So you could be like, oh, I'm going to get the 20... And then the 16 and then the 17, it comes out and like, I just need, you know, I just need a 19 and 18 to pop up. But at the beginning of the game, out of the 
30, 33 cards that are in the game, you take nine of them out at random, but yeah. you can, uh, you can be like, oh, I just need this one card and I have this awesome straight and then you never see that card. Yeah. And it's all also played really openly <clears throat> so other players can see like, oh, yeah. Zach really needs this 19 to like cut his points in mm -hmm. more than half. But yes, but it's also a, if you're that person, you know no one wants that card because right, you can't, they can't do match it with anything. So you really want to try and milk it. But the entire game is about milking that card long enough to get as many tokens on there as it can. Well, yeah, exactly. But taking it before either, you know, someone just wants all of those tokens or someone has to take it because they've ran out of tokens. Yeah. Uh, and it usually feels when you're playing it, you're like the perfect amount of tokens on it is across the table from me. So when it come like when it first comes to you, you're like, oh, there's not enough tokens. And then if it gets like and be and you're like, well, it's not gonna get back to me because then there'll be too many tokens. So it's almost always like the amount of and the amount that you want to be able to get it from that card is usually on another player's turn. And they're like, Oh, this is the perfect amount and I'll take it. And you're just like, fucking I knew it. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> um and so the reason I mentioned that really long straight is because fucking Chris got a twenty, he got like a five or six card straight in this game. And it was so fucking annoying. <laughs> um, he had never played before, right? He had never played Great. before. Yeah. And it, we were just like, like, you know, jokingly like, yeah, you should totally take that stuff. And then he just, the cards kept coming out. And we're like, no, fuck you. And and, and it was never, they were always high enough that it was never going to be worth it for you to take the card. But it was, he ended up getting it. He did at least make the smart move on like the one that connected it. As soon as he could take it, he took it. Yeah. Because he wasn't going to try Because any more than like one or two tokens on there and people were like you know what just just to, to, to say fuck you I'm taking this right <laughs> so. yeah. or, or occasionally sometimes like you'll see where somebody has a big stretch like that there might be one other person at the table who hasn't hardly taken anything yet. exactly and you're like well yeah I'll take a 19 to make you have 30 mm -hmm. and then I'll hope that everybody else beats 19 because exactly. 19 is like not that high yeah uh, but then after we got done uh, we're like okay what do you guys want to play now and, and him and, and another person like Let's just play that again. I was like, all right, cool, perfect. And so we just played it again. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite small box games for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last game, I, I, I yeah. hand out no thanks, like Aunt hands out Hanabi. Right? Yeah. Um, it's a shame. So they have a newer edition of it. And but it's so, bigger. Uh, the one I have, the cards are bigger, which are annoying, but the tokens are just so fucking nice. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to the little like tiddlywink poker chips that uh, came in the older edition. Mm hmm. Um, but I mean, th theoretically, you just need a game that has cards three to thirty-five to play this too. So um, it's one that could be easily easily replicated, which is good. Yes. Or you just take a deck of cards and write numbers on them. <laughs> 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 uh, the last game I played was uh, Moon Adventure, also an Oink game, um, and this one is basically a reimplementation of Deep Sea Adventure, but it is a cooperative game. And so mm -hmm. on this one, we're all on the moon, we're not whalers. We're just regular old astronauts, unfortunately. <laughs> um, we're That's looking, unfortunate. I know. Uh, and you're going, you're going through that that snake of token, that snake line of tokens to look for supplies. Uh, you need eight supplies in order to uh, beat the game. Or I don't know if it's dependent. I'm assuming it might be dependent on the amount of people playing. So maybe it's like two per or something like that. But each uh, each section of the um, the tract it has. A certain amount of tokens that are good supplies and then broken supplies. Uh, and whenever you flip one of them, if it's a good, whether it's good or bad, you put it onto your uh, storage area, which are five cards. And this is where you put your tokens or you, you put the, um, the storage tokens. And then you also put your oxygen that you're using because when you know it, moon doesn't have much oxygen on it. Not at least not enough for us to breathe. You don't. So you don't say. I do, I, I do say, actually. thought it was made of cheese and surrounded by oxygen. Ugh. I don't think so. Don't, no. I don't yeah. want to think about cheese right now. <laughs> I just There was a podcast about gross cheeses that I was just like thinking of as L you said cheese. This seems like it's a you problem specifically. <laughs> it is very, so it is very much a me problem, but it just reminded me of that <laughs> podcast. And I'm just like, mm, I don't want to think about a giant moon made of this gross cheese now. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, in your storage container, you have five spaces or more if you, cause everybody has special powers. Like you have a role and then like a, a person yes. and each one of them has their own, I like unique 
power. Some of it's just a storage plus one. Other ones are letting you do other actions for uh, to have other actions cost less. Um, so in your storage container, you have the tokens and then you have your oxygen. Now, your oxygen is actually how you move through the board mm -hmm. uh, because it has either two dice or three dice on it. And you spend okay. one of those cards and you roll the dice and that's how many actions you have. Okay. The dice are... So like how much time you have before your oxygen runs out as you run around the moon and do stuff? More or less, yeah. Um, dice are just as shitty as the other one? I mean, they're wood, so... I meant like the you can get totally fucked by the dice. Oh, I'm it's dice, so yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but and, and some there are some ways to mitigate it, but it depends on your roll, really. Yeah. Uh, but... Um, you roll the dice. They're they're either they're one, two, and three times two on the on the dice. So, uh, you, um, if you're rolling three dice, you can get a maximum of nine actions or a minimum of three. Um, but each each of the different actions you're doing costs a number of those action points that you're getting from the dice. And like I said, some rolls make things cheaper. But you can you can move around. You can um, flip over the tokens that you're on. Uh, you can also build oxygen resupply points, basically. I forget what they're called, like OGS, oxygen generating stations, I guess. Oh, okay. That makes um, sense. And then at the end of your turn, if you're on one of those, then you can draw from this pile or from this deck to uh, to get oxygen. And you ba you can basically keep drawing until either you run out of space or you hit a magnetic storm, which breaks the OGS. Uh -huh. And so there's only six of them in the game, so you can't just be out there forever. Um, but it's all about just trying to get all of these supplies out. And then, uh, and you can like trade with each other. So if you have like a bunch of empty, like you could, if you have a bunch of oxygen, see people can come next to you, get that oxygen, and then go do other things. Okay. It was, it's fun. It was enjoyable. I think I'd have to play Deep Sea Adventure again because it's been. A couple years at this point. <laughs> yeah. Your watch told you that. Oh, yeah. My watch that's in theater mode that does not show anything. Yeah. Correct. Geekway, the last time I went to Geekway, I think, was when I played Deep Sea Adventure. 2019? Gotcha. Um, Mike Jones has it, so I've yeah. played it. I've played it. I, th I probably would have played it either late 2019 or early 2020, but um, I, f I know Wes said that he, he enjoyed Deep Sea Adventures more. Um, just you know, having that competitiveness in there versus the cooperation in this. But it was it was still an enjoyable time. We played it twice. The first time we cheated a couple times in order to win. Uh <laughs> and but then the second time we won legitimately. Yay. So yay. <laughs> well it was really it was one of those things of like really coming down to the wire and it's like, all right, we need you to have at least four actions in order to to win. And you rolled snake eyes. Oh, it's weird <laughs> how one of those ones actually became a three. Oh. <laughs> um so, but it was, it was still enjoyable and yeah. it's, it's, it's always interesting how much game that those little boxes can hold in there. Yeah. But, um, that's, that's it for me. Right on. Uh, Jeff, did you have anything else that you played that you wanted to talk about? Yes. I played Isle of Cats. Huh? Yes. We just talked about the Kickstarter for that. We did. And now I understand more about that Kickstarter. There, uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, it's a polyomino game you have a boat uh you have to put the cats inside the lines you have to cover the rats um, cats eat rats cats eat rats uh you can also get cards that turn the rats from negative one point into positive one point it turns them into two points each so which the cats become the rats of the, the, the rats become friends of the cats yeah yeah something like that uh i mean Aunt, they, they're Aunt still julie would like that mechanic yeah they're still worth negative one point but they're also worth two points hence becoming one point each which is mm -hmm. still, you know, not terrible. Shit, yeah. Especially because the majority of the rats are in like the connecting hallway, which counts as a room, and you get negative five points for every room you don't have completely covered. So you can kind of turn that into a positive base with those rats because it has the most rats. So you just don't cover them. Okay. Um, but you draft cards, seven cards. Has anyone Zach, you've played this, but Adrian, you've not I played have this. Not. You draft seven cards. You draw seven cards, and then mm -hmm. you draft two, and then you just go around, and then you get the last one, and then you buy the cards, mm -hmm. and then there's terraforming Mars style. Yeah, um, okay. and you and you can choose not to buy, uh, and but you get twenty fish at the beginning of every round, so you can keep over how much you fish you had from the previous round, but you you always get an income of twenty. 
And like Terraform Mars. Yeah, this is basically Terraform Mars. I don't know if he told you that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't oh, realize okay. that Terraform yeah. Mars with polyominoes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Why didn't you tell me? That, that's got to yeah. make it like game number. Like, you, you didn't notice that they had HG asteroids in there and, and meteors. <laughs> yeah. You can demos so, down the, somebody's yeah, cat full yeah, of chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chip full of cats. Uh huh. You just hit it with a moon. Yep. Um. So you're drafting green cards that let you rescue more cats. They have boots and then baskets and then halves of baskets for every completed basket you can rescue you can rescue a cat which is worth three or five depending on which side of the island they're on it's just how they come out there is no difference between three and five it's just how it fills up it fills up the threes and then it fills up the fives um so there might be one on the fives that is a little fancier that you want um the boots is how your initiative order goes and the initiative order doesn't change what changes then and then you do um, – there's personal and public ob- objectives, uh, the lessons they call them because you are like – they're lessons. They're like teaching. I don't know. Something something about learning on the boat. Why teaching the, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> um, the personal ones just go under for end of game and then the public ones go out immediately. Usually those have a choice on them that is like <laughs> – uh, have the most of this cat. I choose this color cat. And you would want maybe the cat that you have the most color of or something. Okay. Um, and then buy that. those will score at the end, but they are visible. Where others, like mine, was the rat one, where it gave me two points. Um, then you're just putting all of these weird shapes of cats and treasures into like families. So the more of the same color cat you have touching, the more points you will get for it. So you want cat families, but yeah, sure. but yep. you also that's, that's the yeah. But you also get but but there's some of those lessons that are for like loner cats, only one type of that color. So okay. even getting like one type of that color might get you a bunch of points. Mm-hmm. Or there will be things that give you more fish based on how many different colors of cats you have. You don't really have negatives for having like one color of cat or one or two of each color of cat. You just don't get points unless you have three or more. But you're trying to fill in all these rooms, and then um, there's, like, treasure cards that get you rare treasures, which are in the bag with the cats, but then go underneath the board, and those are, like, bigger polyominoes that aren't cats. And then there's common treasures that are, like, smaller, like, one-by-ones, or, like, a corner piece, or, like, a like your, your smaller Tetris-y pieces. There to just fill in little spaces. To fill in little spaces, yeah. Because you want to fill in those rooms, and then, like... Certain rooms will have certain colors in them, and if you cover that with the color of the cat, you get to uh, get, like, a common treasure for free, uh, and you just do that over five rounds, and then you score up points at the end, okay. and I got second to last. Uh, Danny, <laughs> who... took a turn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got da- second Danny, to last. Uh, Danny, who had brought the game, uh, she got last, and then... Garrett, who I don't think I'd ever played before. I think he was fairly new to game night, or at least I don't recognize him. Uh, he got first and crushed us because he got like 11 of the 12 purple cats. Like, <laughs> he got all the purple cats. So is that why you said you were second to last? Because you were closer to last than being in first? Correct. Okay. Because uh, it was like, it was a three-player game, so second to last he got is a lot just of, second. He got a lot of personal object or public objectives that he just chose purple for and would just crush us on them. So he got all of those public objectives on top of having like a massive family uh but it was super fun cool. i liked it a lot yeah uh it, it made me look at that kickstarter right? be like oh what is well what's a two uh 225 exactly not, okay, i know maybe right? not maybe not yeah. pay that it's very expensive it um is. especially because the majority of it is like that does sound cool that sounds cool that box would be real nice to have so it only took a little while to set up versus however the long. setup yeah. did take a while exactly I was like, hmm, an insert for this what sure would be nice um, that's but, how they get you. Oh, and in um, the comment about uh, how cats are just like laying through walls and shit like that. Yeah. So there's <laughs> so there's like an exterior of of the boat, and but the rooms you don't need to go through like the door of the room or anything. The room is just an outline that you need to have filled. The cats will sprawl through walls. There's just like a little crack. In the don't cat worry about like, the walls. Yeah. yeah, cats are liquid. Exactly. Man. Yes, cats. This. A hundred percent is the game, mm-hmm. uh, the, especially these weird colored crazy cats. Yeah. Uh, there is also like a wild cat that counts as any color. And it, there's like a bunch of meeples and stuff like that that you you put on them to say what color that you have chosen for them. That's why he had such a big family because he got a bunch of those wilds ah. as well. Yeah, that makes and, sense. And turned them into purples. So the wilds, you have to pick a color. They're not like this counts as every color. Correct. 
yes, when you get it, you can make it whatever color you want. But the the wild ones are also the biggest and weirdest shapes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I would uh I would like to play it again. Um, cool. Because it it is it is it is easy to learn, easy to play, and you just kind of put uh, things together. Uh, there is also some instant cards, which are which are cool. Correct. Yeah. So it's like uh, <coughs> now I have this, and I get a bunch of money because fuck it. <laughs> yep. Like you get fish based on how many of these things you have. And stuff, yeah, yeah, like yeah. That, it's so. like I get get uh, an amount of fish based mm-hmm. on how many of that one color you have. Well, I have eight of that color. I get yep. eight fish. Well, you know what they say: the fish she get fishier. So. Uh huh. I've heard that many yeah. times. It's very, very common. Um, that I hear almost so common that I just I felt silly even mentioning it because yeah, it's just I know so yeah. well known. Everyone yes. knows it. Yeah, uh, so all, almost all the sociopaths know it. Yes, <laughs> certainly all the sociopaths. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah Isle of Cats is, is is a lot of fun. Cool. I I agree with it. it's a hundred number hundred. I think on BGG that it was it closer than that. Yeah, I thought it was in well into the hundreds. It might be well into the hundreds at this point. I don't know. Uh, anything else, Jeff? Uh, besides Draftosaurus, nope. uh, that's all I ended up playing. Right on. Yeah. Uh, well, that lets us move out of the what we've been playing segment, and we can move on to some regular banter. I don't have much because the pre-banter kind of covered the fact that we're in a heat wave and I want to die. <laughs> Um, but you do have air conditioning. I do have air I do not even have air conditioning. Yeah, when you made that comment, I was like, I bet that means he doesn't have air conditioning, which I don't know how I didn't realize considering <laughs> how long you've lived there. Um, yeah, I remember back when like it was a debate, discussion, conversation that Megan and I had about whether we wanted to spend like fucking $4,000 it cost to install air conditioning in this house. Uh, thankfully, it already had central air or it would have been probably way more even. Yeah. Uh, and looking back, I'm like, how was that ever a discussion? Yeah. How did we ever let that be a discussion? <laughs> that should have just been a yes, especially because we got a $2,500 credit from the homeowner when we bought it because the listing said it had central air and right. it did not. Well, it has, it has like the ducting and the central air, but no air conditioning. Yeah. And whoever wrote the listing misstated that. And they were like central heat and AC. And no, it has central heat with central like air ducting. Like, yeah. Like you can, you could turn on just the air circulation to keep the air moving. So like you bring the cool air up from the basement garden level basement thing, you know, pull the hot air from the fucking kitchen on the top floor. Yeah. So we've entered the time of year when we cook almost exclusively with a crock pot because fuck running an oven or a stove in this heat (laughs) on an upstairs floor. Yeah. Yeah. It's all bad. I live in a basement, so it's nice and chilly. Yeah. It feels nice. Yeah. Yeah. our, Our, our basement area you know, aside from still smelling a little off from the flood, now it smells like cleaning fluid because Megan spent two days cleaning the fuck out of everything. That's good. So it's a different strong smell, but still a strong smell down mm-hmm. there. At least it's staying down there. So yeah, yeah, it hasn't really spread the rest of the house through the rest of the house, which is nice. Well, let's turn on that air circulation. You got yourself. It, I mean, stew technically, going. technically, it's on right now because okay. the AC's. I can feel. Well, no, the AC turned off. <laughs> Oh, because it's it's back to the the seventy degrees in here that it should be, right? Oh, the seventy <laughs> degrees downstairs. You should, what you should do is you just put it in here, and then it'll, the house will be cold. It'll be. I n- wish I could <laughs> like it, it pops right off, but the and this is a bullshit thing about Vivint, my like system that came with the house. I didn't pick it. I would not pick it. I do not recommend them. But they've got you know like whole house things so, like my doorbell, the camera, the like motion sensor, the panel. The fucking window sensors, all that shit tied in also with the thermostat. They're all Vivint products. They're all supposed to work nice and play well together. If you pay them at least $30 a month, that's the cheapest plan they have. You even get a little app where you can control them. I could be like, ah, oh, it's warm in here. Let me crank the AC down two more notches and get that kicked on again. But um, you can't just take the panel. You can It pops off real easy and you can still manipulate it. But now that it's not connected to the wall, it has no way to transmit that information to the actual... <laughs> Like climate control. Gotcha. So it's like, yeah, I can turn it down to 50, but the climate control is like, well, before it was unplugged, last it said it was 70, so it's going to be on 70. And then when you plug it back in, it's like, Wah. so it sucks. Don't get vivid. They suck. They're awful. I hate them. All right. But I don't want to spend thousands of dollars to install a new system. Yeah. And then spend, I don't know, $25 a month apparently for SimpliSafe, which is the next cheapest, <laughs> or which is the cheapest, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Anyhow. Um, Oh, I do have. I went. I went to the draft house Saturday uh, to watch UFC. Paul and I, uh, the 
draft house here started selling UFC uh, shows so you can buy a ticket. And I want to say UFC. they did the, did they do one for the that boxing fight too. I probably yeah. I I didn't see. I'm sure that was a thrilling event to watch. Christ, <laughs> uh, I ignored it completely. Um, you didn't want to watch got, uh, people make millions by just sort of hugging each other. No, oh, okay. no, I I didn't want to watch two people who <laughs> one is way past their prime and no one should care about them, and one never had a prime and no one should care about them make millions of dollars off of manufactured drama and vague hugging. No, that was not my idea of a good time. Um. Well, you weren't the only one who thought that, apparently. <laughs> uh, apparently enough people felt yeah. that way that they made millions of dollars off of that event. So, uh, Anyhow, they had a UFC fight. So it's 25 bucks a ticket, which is a bit pricey. Um, it, but it's it, it was one of the coolest experiences I've had for watching a UFC short of going to a UFC. Like, it, it beat being in, like, a cramped, dirty bar trying to see like a TV that's hanging over a right. bar with a bunch of fucking assholes in the way. Was it at one of the smaller theaters? It was one of the smaller okay. ones. It wasn't their smallest. Uh, I don't think. Um, and, it, and it was mostly full. There were a lot of people. They kept the lights kind of up and they didn't have any kind of a don't fucking talk during yeah. the movie because it's yeah. not a movie and of course people are going to talk. Um, <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying to watch this. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to watch these people beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. Dude, shut get, the fuck up. Yeah. Dude gets knocked out. Everybody's like, "Woo!" It's like, "Hey, shut up!" I'm trying to. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch him be mm-hmm. unconscious in quiet in silence. Um, but uh, but no, it was really cool. It was a little expensive. I I wouldn't do it very often. Uh, one because it was a little bit more than I want to spend, considering you know streaming is free. <laughs> um, and uh, it didn't finish until eleven thirty, so I didn't leave the Alamo in Sloan's Lake until 1130. I had to drive all the way home, then get into bed and fall asleep and then turn around and have my alarm go off at 430 in the morning, which was painful. Yeah. Um, Seems about right. Yeah. Uh, so I wouldn't do it very often. Uh, we looked and the next two fights were definitely not interested in doing it. Uh, the, the cards kind of suck. Um, but if there's another big, huge card with a bunch of good fights, uh, the fights were, for the most part, really good. Uh, I saw easily the worst sports injury. Uh, well, not sports injury, but certainly the worst MMA injury I've seen yet. Uh, apparently, in the end, he only dislocated his elbow and they were able to pop it right back in. Mm. Uh, but in the moment, it looked like uh, every bit of connecting tissue in his elbow had been severed. Uh, and that the only thing holding his lower arm onto his upper arm was just skin. Mm. Uh, and he was trying to tap, uh, but the ref was an idiot. Uh, apparently it was a local ref who oh. like had never refed a big event like this before. Yeah, and he never it, will again. And he's like, man, look how weak his hits are. He's just, <laughs> well, and, and the other fighter, I think thought that the guy, cause earlier they'd kind of rolled and he'd kind of got an arm bar and I thought it looked like the guy kind of tapped, but then they rolled around and he got his arm kind of free and he was like, Oh, the ref didn't catch that. I'm going to keep going. And then they kept fighting. Uh, and then the guy Sounds got like him the ref should have caught that. The ref should have caught that. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy got him in another arm bar and like, and he went to like roll out of it, which you can kind of sometimes do, but it was in too good. And so, uh, his hand and forearm, you could see stay put as the entire rest of his body rolled around his elbow. Mm. And then he's trying to tap mm. and the ref's just like, no. So then he's like, well, shit, I'm still like bad. So he kind of started to fight. And the other guy's like, well, this arm isn't doing any, like, it yeah. went limp. <laughs> Let me start, like, hitting him. And so he had him, like, kind of locked up his legs, like, elbowing him and punching him. And the ref finally, like, stopped it for that. Like, you know, this guy's just getting the shit kicked out of him. And then on the replay, you could see the guy, like, trying to tap, like, four or five times. And it was it was, it was was pretty brutal. Um, and then they, even worse, the ref went to do the, like, hey, you know, raise the hand for the winner. And so the one guy's, like, holding his hand. I couldn't believe he was still there. And the ref, like, grabbed his wrist, like, and he was like, oh, oh, okay. And so he let his arm go, and it just dropped down, and, like, you could <laughs> Pendulumed. see. You could see that it was not correct. There was, like, jutting. Oh, and, and and everybody I, in the theater was, like, cringing. I thought I was going to vomit. I thought for a second you were going to say he was like, all right, let's grab and grab the hand. <laughs> no, no. Uh, and I can really relate to this because it reminds me very much of one of my experiences in high school wrestling. The One of my first big tournaments uh, as a freshman, I got thrown, and I broke my collarbone. Uh and I was like, you know, my, like, I, I'm hurt. Uh, my collarbone's broken. And they finally pulled me aside. And they kind of broke apart. And they're like, okay, maybe you hurt something here. Let's wrap your arm. And so they wrapped my arm uh, under, like, the forearm of, of the one with the broken collarbone. 
and they took the big gauze wrap and they went up over the broken collarbone to make like a sling but that then the stretchy gauze was then just the weight of my arm and the stretchy gauze was just pulling down on the broken collarbone so i had to spend the whole drive to the hospital like my hum thumb hooked under the gauze holding it up off the broken collarbone like bouncing along uh it sucked it was incredibly painful i vomited like four fucking times by the time i got to the hospital and they shot me full of morphine great great so that's my banter i'm done uh okay. now that everybody is thoroughly nauseated by injury tales yes um yeah i haven't really played anything i haven't really watched anything i started watching handmaid's tale like two weeks ago with megan it's good we're in the second season um yeah that's it jeff zach either one of you take it away um so i finished ghost of tsushima uh mm-hmm. which was good but i also wish that uh there were more choices to be made in that game okay and I just mean in relation to their previous um, in infamous games where you had powers and then you could choose good or bad things and the story went based on that. This mm-hmm. one, it, it sounded like it was going to do that because it's based on um, like you either being an, an honorable samurai or like a, 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 a the, uh, the ghost basically who comes in and, you know, frightens people and blah, all that stuff. And it seemed like that's what like before playing the game, I thought that's what I was going to go, but it's not. It doesn't do that at all, which is okay. a shame, but it's still real fun. Uh, I still have a couple more things to do, but as soon as I finished and I got to the credits and I was like, oh, you still got some more things to do. I was like, oh, that's good to know. And then I saw that Amazon was like, hey, your Ratchet and Clank has been delivered. And I was like, all right, fuck this game. We're going to put in this game instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so they have a day one patch on uh, Ratchet and Clank uh, Rift Apart um, with the uh, performance ray tracing so it's the okay. same thing you know because <laughs> these are the people that did uh spider-man and mm-hmm. and miles morales so they had like a fidelity mode a performance mode and then they added a performance ray tracing mode okay. so the fidelity gets you all the pretty graphics 4k that sort of stuff but it's 30 30 frames per second performance is 60k or sorry <laughs> 60 fps and then the performance rt is 60 fps but with uh, ray tracing, but they reduced the resolution a little bit, but then sort of ups. I don't know. It looks fucking pretty though. The yeah, game. it looks it, good. It looks. I, I played the first little bit of it as well. Yeah, it, it does look very, very good. Nice. Um, you got that classic Ratchet and Clank humor in there. I've you, never played any Ratchet and Clank. You game. should. No, I don't think I have either. Really? Really? No. That's, that's that's surprising. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff them. was going to be like, I don't you think own I them? can be friends I with you I own all anymore. of them, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. But you've <laughs> never played any of them. No. Why do... Okay. Amazing. What the... Okay, so I think... How many of them would you say that you own? Four. Okay. On the third one... Wh- I had <laughs> ended up buying them all as oh, okay. like a buy two, get one free thing. Gotcha. For the PlayStation 2, and I just bought all three of them at once. Yeah. Because uh, they were each like... $20 or something right. like that and then I just never ended up playing them. Gotcha. Um but yeah, no, so far it's it's been fun. I'm not too far into it, but um cool guns, pretty. <laughs> the the yeah. surfer dude. Yeah, the surfer. The bra like mm-hmm. gator goons or yes. whatever. Yeah. They have like huge like huge ripped dudes with alligator heads, but they all talk talk by talk like bro surfer dudes. Yeah. And I think <laughs> I think I think they're called they were at least called in one game. I don't know if they've switched it, but basically they're they're like thugs for less is like who who, who? <laughs> the 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 thug company that they work for. Sure, so, yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I remember coming across a conversation that was like, so bruh, we're gonna have to ask for a little bit more money. And he's like, what do you mean? I mean the job's dangerous. And he's like, well, one of our dudes like got eaten by a kraken. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna, you know, need more money, dude. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> the whole thing about this game and the reason why it had to be a PlayStation five exclusive is that like you're going through different dimensions, but like pretty much instantaneously, like yeah. in, the, in the opening part, there's a thing where you're grinding on these rails and then you like jump through and you're immediately in a whole entire new world. And then you're like floating down. And then you go into a different one and there's like dinosaurs. It's like yeah. you're going all these different things and it ha- and you need that the um, solid state drive and they're for instantaneous loading. Yeah, instantaneous loading. Ah. And uh it's it's real cool to it's just very, watching very that pretty. stuff go. So yeah. nice. it's uh it's been fun. Uh first episode of Loki, 
is <gasps> out. Yeah, did you? I did. Okay. Yes. Um, it was it was good. It was good. I liked it a lot. Yep. I, it's so far been my favorite episode one of any of the three Marvel TV shows. I would agree with that. This one's sh- even shorter than the other ones, right? No, yeah. six. It's uh, Winter Soldier was six as well. Okay, but so WandaVision was nine, but it also its episodes were it was like thirty. Yeah, twenty. Or less. Yeah, yes. and then they so. got longer as it got on. Whereas this one was fifty minutes, and most of Winter Soldiers were about uh, forty-five to fifty minutes as well. So yeah. it looks like it's going in that same vein of yeah. length. Um, but no, it's it was real good. It started, you know, right in End Game, where mm-hmm. you would expect right, it to. Right in the action. Yep. And and they actually had like one or two little things, uh, little clips that they added in there to focus more on Loki at that point. Um, and then shenanigans entail once you know he teleports away, and then the the TVA is like, "Hey, buddy, how's it going? What's up, <laughs> What's up, dude? What's up, What's up? dude? Uh, yeah, I I like everything like that, that opening scene." when he first teleports away and he's in that other place and he's like giving his yeah. whole big speech yeah. and then they don't speak English. Yes. And he's just <laughs> like, like, who are they uh, saying? <laughs> just a moment. Yeah. He just constantly gets undercut like that all episode. It's mm-hmm. just great. Yeah. Um, well, and it's, it's like things that people have to remember is that this is, this is the Loki of right after the Avengers. Yeah. So you don't get that. You don't get Thor two. You don't get you Thor don't two, get Thor Endgame, three. Infinity yeah. War. Yeah. You don't get any of that. All of that great development that he had from there to be from like just a Rag- bad guy Thor to Rag- a... well Thor Ragnarok was certainly the biggest. exactly yeah Thor yeah, two and yeah the two Thor movies they keep making Thor uh, Thor two as good as they can they do they really do <laughs> 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 um, but Tom Hiddleston just acts the the fuck out of this he's especially so good. especially at one uh, at um, at one particular moment when he's watching some stuff and you're just like fuck I, I like you can see all that character development. Just like just through his eyes, and yeah. you're just like, God damn, yeah. Um, and it's real funny too, which is good. Yeah. Um, carrying it, carrying that over in a way from the uh, the Thor movies, mm-hmm. but so uh, when he opens that fucking drawer, and you're just like, what the fuck? Oh man, that was such a great scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, the, like, uh, God, what was it? <sighs> he was in uh the good place P- pony boy no no it's pill boy pill boy yeah his pill name boy. is eugene cordero <laughs> is the actual that's actor where I yes recognized yeah. Him from. yeah yeah it's like okay. that's pill boy yeah it's like <laughs> I'll, I'll slay you like a fish what's a fish wait what do you mean well i need to know if it like i need to know what you're talking about if i, I need can context need context so i can take the three yeah. visually <laughs> um uh you can tell from the trailers that like owen wilson like he's got a lot of gray hair uh-huh. like, and anybody like if you've seen him lately like he's aging Megan doesn't follow any what? kind of stuff like people that. People are aging. I know, that people age. It's crazy. Uh, so we, we were like, I don't know, like five to ten minutes in, like shortly after he had, like mm-hmm. a couple scenes after Owen Wilson's character had shown up. Yeah. And she's like, oh. I was like, did you just realize that was Owen Wilson? She goes, yeah. He's so much older than the last time <laughs> I saw him in a movie. Yeah. He also doesn't have that 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 blonde mm-hmm. shoulder mm-hmm. length. Health. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's also I can't remember her name, but she was in Lovecraft Country as the sister. She was Ruby. She was in, yeah, yeah. Um, that and, was she was good in that too. And thank you for mentioning that in Slack because the whole movie we were both like, she is so familiar. Yeah. And then you said that, and I was like, it's a sister from Lovecraft Country, and she went, yep. oh, yeah. Okay. No. Okay. That that moment was gay when he's just like back and forth, and back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm real curious to see where they take this. Yeah, I have no idea where they're going with it. Well, it yeah. can go literally anywhere. Yeah, so true. No, Time and I and, I, and I like that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, there's this. There is an image or a scene where it's just like it feel like if you are part of the fan culture of the Marvel m- movies, it feels completely different than just watching it on a show. Uh, like just watching it normal because like the Mephisto thing. You're like, who's Mephisto? Oh, is that what that no, you well, were talking? That's about? what was I was talking scene? about. Yeah, I was just like, this is totally Mephisto, even though it's to- it's not. It's supposed to be a reference to Loki, but. <laughs> See, that's it's where the I was devil. It's the, yeah. I took you seriously. Oh, no. So I thought you were like, oh, it's confirmed. And I was like, no. No. I knew that was a rumor going in that that would be a part. No. And then, no. no, that's because that was the whole thing with WandaVision. Yeah. Was about that. Okay. And then when now nothing, I'm yeah, on the same Now, page. once it didn't happen, then. Then now everything. Now is. everything. And then, then they're like, who did this? And they point to a literal devil with horns. It's just, then it's just like. Oh, that just feels like it's obviously such a tease. It's such a, it's even on the nose. They may have well just had a middle finger yeah. in stained glass. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> oh, that would have been great. Yeah. 
Uh, Cause yeah, like I like you said that, and so I started looking up Mephisto because I'm mm-hmm. like not super into the comic yeah. lore and everything. He's the I'm devil. Like, He's the devil. Yeah, which that much I knew, but I was like looking for greater connection to Loki or whatever. And apparently, at one point, he did like take Loki's soul. Sure, I'm, I'm sure I he's mean, taken literally everyone's yeah. soul yeah. at one point or another. Yeah, his his whole thing was like doing wasn't like the biggest thing that he did was like have a divorce like divorce. He with he, pe- he 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 charged Peter Parker the price of his marriage to save Aunt May. Jesus. Yeah. So they like never got married and then would like never have kids and then and then it has been known as to be like the worst storyline <laughs> in Spider-Man history. Okay, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Uh this was right after Civil War, the original Civil War where he came out as like Peter Parker. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then everyone knew his identity and then he switched sides, but everyone still knew he was Peter Parker and everyone Send us someone sent an assassin to kill them and hit Aunt May, and she was in the hospital. And he and Mephesto was like, "Eh, your marriage, eh, eh, eh." And he's like, "Yes." And everyone's like, "What the fuck, dude? She's like a million years old." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was bad. It was mm-hmm. real bad. But but Loki was, was good. Loki was great. Yes, I really look forward uh, to more. Yeah, it was, and it led to even ugh, the other is bad too. <laughs> he got like spikes that he would have in his wrists that would have like venom and then he would be able to use like his webs and be able to like feel things in his web like people under rubble or something and then they never reference his new powers ever again. That seems right. <laughs> I totally buy just a writer being like, mm, that's stupid. I'm not going to talk about that anymore. <laughs> I hated everything about that. I'm let's, not going to yeah. pretend it didn't exist. <laughs> let's and never speak of this again. <laughs> yeah. And they didn't. Cool. Uh, Jeff, any other banter things on your end? Uh, Ratchet and Clank. Loki. Loki. <sighs> no, I don't think so. Beer continues to be ruling my yep. world. <laughs> drink beer. Drink beer. Drink Avery beer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> then drink other beers. Gotcha. But first drink our beer. There you go. Um, oh, I drove up to Mount Evans over the weekend. That was fun. Neat. Yeah. Um, you have to do the reservation thing now for a lot of stuff to actually like get actually reserve a ticket online in order to actually do there, go there. Really? Yes. I think it's like just for, obviously just for this year, but like they, like they're implementing it just to make sure it wasn't getting overcrowded or anything like that. Um, and <laughs> I, I went to, I went to reserve it and it looked like they had like four different options for it. But only two of them were available to me. Like of the four, like one of them was just like the Mount Evans timed recreation fee and then access to all of the sites. And then it looked like they had like sort of like parking spots or whatever parking fees for each of the three different places. So Mount Goliath and then Summit Lake and then the actual Summit blah, blah, blah area, whatever they call it. Sure. But only the Summit Lake and the Mount Goliath one was available. So I went to purchase it, but I kept, I couldn't, I could not figure out if me buying those meant I could actually go on to the scenic byway. <laughs> <laughs> and so I ended up, I, I bought it. And then when we were driving up there, um, you know, we were getting close to the park thing and, and it was like QR code. So I was like going to scan it. And so I go here, she scans it and she's like, oh, it's not reading. And in the back of my mind, I'm like. Ah, fuck, ah, fuck, ah, fuck. And she's just like, yeah, well, it happened last time. Like, yesterday this happened to once or, or once or twice, too. Can you just read off the number on the bottom? And I was just like, uh, yeah, it's this blah, 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 blah. And she's like, okay, here's the map. Bye. And then we just drove on up. And I was like, okay, well, either it worked like it was supposed to, or I just sort of <laughs> snuck my way in. <laughs> and it's not like we were going, like, there were people there that were like, going to a place and parking for many hours to go do high game yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. right? We were there to just literally drive around. Ooh, picture. All right, drive around. Ooh, picture. Ooh, and then take him up to the summit. Yeah. Um. So I didn't feel bad about it. And I and I technically spent more money because I bought two tickets just to make sure of the difference. Like, because oh, I bought the huh. Mount Goliath one and then I was like, if they're somehow limiting you how far you can go up, I want to get as far as we can. So I'm going to buy the Summit Lake one too. <laughs> but... Um, I made that classic mistake of driving for a while and then we got out in the first, like we got out near the lake and I was just like looking at my arms and I'm like, oh man, those are, <laughs> those are red. Oh, right. Sunscreen. <laughs> now, luckily yeah. I, it looks like I caught it right at the right time because it's, I mean, I, they're a little red, but that's about it. Um, 
but it could have been re- it could have been real bad if I just wasn't paying attention because I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel it now. And you know, once you get twelve thousand, thirteen thousand, like that sun's getting toasty for you. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people don't think about sunscreen sometimes on those bigger hikes up there. Yeah, uh, and it's like, yeah, you're you're much closer to the sun. There's a lot less atmosphere between mm-hmm. you and the sun. Exactly, and it might not feel warm because you're so high. Yeah, but it's still cooking you like a yeah. fucking hot dog. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and luckily, it was su- like the weather was super cooperative. It was 55 degrees up at the summit, and it was just barely partly cloudy. Which was good, and then we got home, and then I saw like I guess like a couple hours later, later like in southern part of Denver, like hail, like the size of like quarters was hitting some people. It was like golf ball north yeah. of us. Like apparently, my, my house we got fucking lucky, and it split. Some of it went down to Denver, and some of it went north and hit one of my coworkers' house. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know it happened at I, all until yeah. Same. So, uh, real lucky that that didn't affect us going up on a fucking mountain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. But that's it now. Cool. Right on. Well, that lets us move over to some news and Kickstarters. First up on news, BGG Con 2021. It's happening. Toot it's happening toot. in Texas. And at its normal time? Yeah. Week before Thanksgiving. So. Yes. It's not a game pushed or anything like that for the full four days. Yep. So November 17th through the 21st. Um, they uh, are planning on doing a smaller convention. Currently, uh, less meeting rooms, more social distancing, staggered entry, things like that. Uh, they might have a waiver to fill out uh, and or ask you at registration if you have been vaccinated or tested negative in the last seven days. They may require masks when moving around and or in masks required gaming areas. Uh, that would be like they mentioned here for like people who are more comfortable with that. Like because some people are still kind of on the fence about where things are, mm-hmm. um, you know, and so like having a designated mask required area would be nice for people who want that added layer of, you know, feeling comfortable with things. Yes. Um, as conditions improve, we might do none of that. So basically they still don't really know exactly how they're happening, how they're doing any of this. Um, I don't think Gen Con has even come out and said no. anything. They're like, give us money and we'll, I don't know, tell you later, I guess. Yep. I've gotten um, a survey of like, what do you want to happen? And this was like three days before badges went on sale. Oh, yeah. Um, it's also going to be a situation where when badges go on sale for BGG Con, it's going to be tight to start. So they say they have 1,700 rollover badges. When they open up registration, they're only allowing up to 2,500 total. Uh, so uh, I think I might be misreading that. They might be going uh, opening up 2,500 tickets. So they would have like a little over 4,000. I don't know. Not sure what their normal numbers are, which makes it hard for me to determine what they're actually saying here. But uh, to me, it reads like they're going to let the number go from 1,700 pre-registration to 2,500 total registration. That's how I'm reading it, too. Uh, so, you know, not a whole lot of room there. About 800 tickets will be available at the start. Um, then they are planning uh, to open another 1,000 badges uh, in August. So... Uh, we'll see. Um, they're moving to tabletop dot events, which apparently they didn't use in the past. Um, and June twentieth is the deadline. Uh, so like just a couple days after you're listening to this, June twentieth is the deadline for the rollover badge num badges from twenty twenty to request a refund. Yep. So, but then on the twenty uh, third is when they those eight eight hundred um go on sale. So we'll see. If I can get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> F5, F5, F5. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, no, that will be at seven o'clock in the morning. At least I can do that for a little while before going to work. So that's go. good. What date is the, or what day is the 23rd? Um, a June? Monday? Uh, it is a Wednesday. I'll be off if you really want me to sit here in F5 for you. <laughs> no, that sounds, I don't, that sounds bad. Sounds worse than it is. Say, saying that I'll F5 for you yeah. sounds bad. Yeah. I guess. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so BGG Con is happening. Uh, maybe good luck getting a ticket. I don't know. If they're, if they're giving 2,500 tickets, you'll probably be fine. If it really is only 800. Well, yeah. <laughs> good luck. I will not be attending. I have still never attended a BGG Con. I want to, even though it's in Texas. Um, yeah. It was but, fun. I mean, it was. I enjoyed it when I went. So it was just... I, 
I've always heard really good things. And when you know the majority of my time was spent Sure, it was spent in Texas, but it was just spent in a gaming hall in Texas, so it's not. It's it was it was okay. Yeah. Were you on the faded car trip with the weird GPS that took you all over the city? Or was that just Paul and Boyd having bonding moments? I don't know. I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Right, yeah, I'm gonna go with no. All right, moving on to the next bit of news. Unfathomable news. <laughs> uh, Battlestar Galactica, the board game, is getting a retheme into the Arkhamverse. Yes. The Arkham Files themselves. Do they still use Arkham Files? No, it's no. Arkham Horror Files. Arkham Horror Files now. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, Battlestar Galactica. It's Deep Ones. There's yeah. probably not an airlock because if you throw someone overboard and they're half fish, it's not going to really be a problem for them. In fact, except it'll be not, like, except oh, they're not, on the, they're, they're not on the boat anymore. <laughs> they can just climb back on the boat. Yeah. But there's some. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some type of an airlock it's, mechanic. Everybody always says the airlock mechanic is like the single best thing about Battlestar Galactica. Yes, it is. If they got sure. rid of that. That would be disappointing. Yeah. Well, Maybe wasn't that wasn't that in, in the like, expansion? That was only the expansions right. that added that. It yeah. was only a prison in the original base game. Which I mean, I guess maybe. It could and then be a prison. event cards would let you get like a gun and then shoot them or something. Sure. So you would lock them up and then shoot them later through the bars. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see exactly what mechanics get ported over and what don't, uh, but the, you're, uh, you're on a steamship in this one, two days from port crossing the Atlantic ocean, um, on your way to Boston and then deep ones attack. Um, so yeah, you still have your like meters for, you know, keeping certain stuff like food mm -hmm. and ship conditions up high enough uh i think there's a lot of new like characters they're not really the same yeah i don't see a lot i'm not noticing a lot of yeah. that you have seen in the arkham world before but it still has the same cylon human thing you can become like a cylon or a hybrid uh you know halfway through the game and and might not be one at the beginning of the game uh, I assume there's going to be some sort of like, now I'm the captain sort of situation where you are then in charge a la the president, or you can be like admiral president or whatever it was, or you can be in charge of the military right. or, and be president. <laughs> I think that's how I won my last game is I got turned into admiral president and then I became a Cylon and then- Oh yeah, that's not good for them. No, uh, <laughs> and then I was doing. So well. I'm, ass I'm assuming you just immediately you're like, oh, I got both of these. Hey, everybody, I'm a Cylon and shoot yourself in the head, right? That <laughs> yeah, seems yeah, like yeah, the right yeah, thing yeah, to do. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I think it was like, oh well, both of these kind of suck. I guess I'm going to put this one on the bottom and then put this one on the top. Sorry, everyone. Oh, we're surrounded by battle star, not battle stars, uh, Cylon. What's the name of their star? No clue. No idea. I have had um, no connection to any Battlestar lore. The or... Cylon sh big ships or whatever. Fuck. And then I was like, hooray, they're killing us. <laughs> um, it seems like they have a similar thing here with like three tiers, like small ones, medium ones, big ones. But the small ones can get on the ship. So you're not going to yep. have, I mean, there's no starfighters uh, in this to where, it's not like you're going out in boats and rowing boats out into the ocean to fight the to fight that. the deep ones. You I mean, don't. so far I don't see any boats on here. Yeah, I there uh, is a brig, so that is cleared up. Yes, that was in the the, the base game. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how things go. Yeah. I mean, it's a new version. Uh, I am interested. Uh, I'm sure someone that likes this kind of game more than me will spend the like eighty dollars for it. So yeah, I don't know. It looks interesting. Um. They only revealed one character so far, uh, Kehlani Tatapu, who's the captain. Says it's a full cast of brand new characters, yeah. so all new. There you go. Because I think it takes place like 20 years before Arkham stuff. I don't so know like 1900? Yeah, and it's 1913. 1913 is when yeah. this takes okay. place. I don't know when Arkham- They, they just got over the Titanic and it's- <laughs> uh, Arkham is usually like Prohibition era. Yeah, like the 30s. Okay. So then, yeah few decades before uh it sounds like it will have somebody i think because we were talking about this uh like a week ago in our slack channel like somebody was like i think zach was like hey i've heard rumors about this uh before the initial announcement mm -hmm. 
Uh, but someone was talking about they weren't sure if it would have the classic reveal in the middle, like where you get another mm. round of cards. And reading through the human and hybrid card, I think you definitely yes, do have yeah. that. Yes, yeah. I, I mentioned that earlier where it, you do have that. Oh, yeah. yes. Sorry. Yeah. I was probably reading about that when you said that. Probably. Yes, probably. Okay, well. It seems and like it has all of the mainstays of the base game yeah. of Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. And even um, the original designer or one of the designers of the first Battlestar uh, said, Corey, what's it? Can, Corey can it you? No. I don't. Another one. But someone who worked at Fantasy Flight, maybe it's that one. Um, but he was just like, BSG is back too. Like, so it's not like... Being like, oh, it's it's not that, but it's similar. It's just basically no. We lost the theme. We lost the um the sorry. The rights. What, sorry, what did you say, Adrian? I said Corey Knizia. Correct. Oh, it is that one. Okay. <sighs> All right. Counting that as a board game victory for this year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because you do get most of them wrong, so I had to verify. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's totally fair. I expected to get it wrong, especially the way you're like, Adrian. What'd you say? I want to make sure how fucking wrong you were. Yes. Anyway, yeah. that wraps he's, up on. He's made a lot of games. I like. Yes. Certainly been involved in a lot yeah. of them. Jeez. And this, yeah, this one is based on design by Corey Ganizio. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Unfathomable coming soon. Probably more info in the future too. $80. Next up on news. Last up on news, uh, Orleans is getting a new publisher, a new US publisher, and that is Capstone Games as they gobble up all of the publishing rights to all yeah. of the games. Well, <laughs> and, and this makes me feel like What's going on with TMG? Because I feel like we saw that they had some yeah. issues in the past, and this is like one of their big ones. I like, think, the... I think this doesn't bode well for yeah. TMG. Yes. Um. Yeah. So Capstone clearly doing a great job of growing uh, and getting a bunch of new things. Also, real quick, before we get too far into the discussion of this, just for Paulo's corner's sake, I'm going to say that it's not. Uh, what, how'd you say it, Jeff? The name of the game. Or Orleans. I, I bet it's. You know, knowing, learning from Trois and Lovre, I'm guessing I'm, it's I'm per, oh. I'm enunciating way too many letters yeah. in, Far too in many. the name. <laughs> I know it looks like a word with seven letters in it, but really there's only two. There's maybe it's oh. maybe it's just Orleans. <laughs> maybe. I doubt it, but. Well, Anyhow. it's a U.S. publisher, so we have to say it like that. Well, there you go. Yeah. Although it has an accent mark, and I don't know how to interpret accent marks on English words. Like American English words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just got to be like, eh, it's there for- No, we just take them out and then just pronounce them wrong. But they didn't in this press release. I know, it's, but it's like unfortunate. on New Orleans, New Orleans, there is no accent mark in that name. I still don't think many people say New Orleans. They say New Orleans. Or, some, some. or if you're from there, Nolans. Yeah. Or- Louisville mm -hmm. uh, or Louisville. 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 I kind of sort of dated a girl in high school who was from Louisville, as I think it should be pronounced. Uh -huh. And she was all about, no, we're from Louisville. Oh, yep. uh, it did not last long. I could not handle the way she spoke. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like in other instances or just that one word? Oh, no, okay. no. It all was right. that Kentucky drawl. It, okay. Mm -mm. She was, that, that's a tale for not on the podcast. Uh... <laughs> Anyway, Capstone version of Orléans uh, will include components that allow for play with up to five players as opposed to the two to four for the base game. Uh, it will also include invasion and trade and intrigue expansions. So they're wrapping it all up into a big fancy version. Um, so yeah. Uh, and the first comment on BGG, by the way, I hadn't scrolled down. The writing is on the wall for TMG. Yeah. Mm. So... Um, Definitely uh, disappointed for TMG. Uh, yeah, hate to see that. But I also really like Clay over at Capstone Games. Mm -hmm. Like he's one of the few publishers who I feel like actually knows who the fuck I am. Somebody's like, "Hey, Adrian from My High Game Guys, want to do this?" He'd be like, "Oh yeah, I know Adrian. Okay." How did you meet him originally? Uh, heavy Cardboard. Yeah, okay. say through Edward. Yeah, um, we, we I've played a couple games with him on Heavy Cardboard streams, and then I've interacted with him at a bunch of different conventions Is he and stuff. Are, from around here or was he like no. flying in no, for streams he, he came in for oh. it, it, i mean it was right around heavy con yeah. i think or something like that there was a reason he was in town i see it wasn't just like fly in for this stream which stream was that uh estates uh -huh. yeah so um yeah that's about it for the information for uh Capstone picking it up. Uh, Capstone yeah, we'll see continues. Where it goes. To... It's just it's just good to hear that it's coming back because it was I really like the expansion, the first expansion. Invasion. Yeah. So there you go. Um, 
That's it for news. We can move on to some news and Kickstarters. Well, we did news already, so now I mean, we're just sorry, yeah, on we can move on to some kicks. I don't know why the the two are permanently melded in my brain. I can't say one without the other. First up on Kickstarter, we have Orbit Dice, a uh, very well funded a hundred and or sorry, five hundred and sixty five thousand of its eighteen thousand dollar goal, almost uh fifty eight hundred backers uh and about a one week left to pledge this one which you can for i don't know infinite money uh (laughs) yeah how much do you want to spend yeah uh so this is um first time creators on kickstarter making these new fancy uh dice but these are spherical dice how would the how would these ever stop rolling you know so it's, it's good that you ask that uh because they have an internal mechanism Uh, that is a smaller, like, metal bearing set inside, uh, and there's, like, little notches in it, so when you roll it, that metal bearing quickly falls and then, like, affects the rotation and And locks it down. And they have some, like, you know, here it is rolling, and, like, it barely rolls. It, like, it it rolls a bit, and then it, and then once it gets caught in it, and then it sort of balances. Weighs it it down. Yeah, weighs it down, and I'm going to assume that the only way for this to logically work is that the holes in there correspond to the amount of faces of the dice. That would be the only way it would logically work. Unfortunately, they do not verify that exactly. anywhere in the fucking yeah. Kickstarter. Um, Because they have, they have anywhere from, they go D4, D6, D8, 10s, 12s, and 20s. Yeah. And so... Each one of those would have to have that many... Like notches. It would have to have Not- 12, b- between yeah. four and 12 notches inside. Yeah. Yeah. Which I could see for the smaller ones. Like the one they show looks like it's probably the D8. The way they have it split, it looks like it's uh-huh. got four notches. Although that looks like a D12. And that looks like. Well, so that, that but that the- one, that image of it, it looks like what's rolling is different than the image. Maybe. Yeah. Mm. That one looks like the D8. So yeah. that's where it's, yeah, it's. <sighs> it's hard to say. Uh, so I've. A, I doubt I've, they would make a product that it's like. These facings can never roll. Exactly. I would doubt that. But also I would not I would not. For first time creators making something that nobody's ever done. I don't know. I tell you though, this would definitely be something that if I saw at Gen Con or something something like that, so you could try it out. Oh yeah. Then it'd be like, oh, this is actually really cool. Then be like, oh, this isn't too bad. Like have one set of these weird dice, that'd be sort of cool. But to be like, oh, I'm gonna put fucking a hundred bucks. On these, just to see if they work well. Now yeah. it does come with an interesting. It's like um, it's like sixty dollars. Si- sixty dollars for one. Sorry, set. I was looking at the wombo combo. Which if I was gonna get any of them, I would get one of those, just because it has a the term wombo in it. Well, not just that, but it's got like a circular dice uh, box thing in it. Yeah. So, um, an orb dice tower. Yes. Uh, the dice tray, uh, or uh, yeah, dice tower. Like yep. so, you can roll it through this like ring ring. Um. I the other problem I have with these dice is like sure if you keep them in their little set and you always put your D4 back in the D4 spot and the D6 and the D6 spot great but if you ever have these like jumbled in with all your other dice like it's hard to th- tell at a it's glance it's going to be hard to tell yeah. at a glance which one is the D12 versus the D20 or the D6 versus the D4 cuz they're not that dissimilar like yeah, you're not going to confuse the 20 and the 4 because of the size of the, mm-hmm. the shapes on the sphere, but some of those that are a little closer in size, eh, I don't know. Um, they have a whole kit set thing that involves painting them yourself. For so some you, of them, yeah. Yeah, so some of them, they've got um, like ridges and everything to do the different faces, uh, and then it comes with paint to paint them. Uh, this is the other thing that then shows another problem I have with this is like looking at at that image there of the pa- the first part of the painting, uh, how how do you tell what value is showing on literally any of those? It's the it's the marks. It's how many marks there are. There's... So is the pink blast showing one or two? It's it's showing. Or, it looks like a fucking, one. It looks like a one. I would say one. Okay. So cyberpunk blues at a glance. How many is that showing? It's six, obviously. Six. Yeah, you obviously. got that five. Nope. But then nope. there's that teeny tiny little nope. one that shows up when you glance real close. Yeah. Um, the ones that don't have numbers are, seem silly, yeah. Or like it's just, it's marks that aren't, it's non-standard marks, right? Because yeah. like pips, it's easy to tell. 
Yeah. Yeah. And like some of these other ones, like, I mean, I guess this one here in the bottom left of that image uh, that I got up there on the computer screen is, is so that I see a nine and a 10. Is that an 11? Is that a, this is the scratch marks, which marks that this is a D12 and that's a 12. Is that a roll again? Because this isn't a valid number. I, the uh, the seems graphic me- design on this is fucking terrible i definitely agree the scratch set does not look great but luckily that's just the set that is is like you can get ones that aren't that one yeah so that's the, good at the least dragon egg ones look okay yeah they're clear to usually read, all those have numbers on them mm-hmm. as well yeah um i don't know and then some of these like the the weird shapes and grooves all over them i feel like are gonna throw off rolling like they're not even like a uniform sphere um and I have that same concern with like some regular dice that get a bunch of weird embossing or engraving or shit all over them. Uh, it's like, I feel like that would affect rolling, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm not interested. Like it was one of those where I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Wait a second. No, that's dumb. That's dumb. That's dumb. <laughs> that's also dumb. OK, this is dumb. I would, that was my exact train of thought. I would I would have to I would have to try them out and then see them physically in order to 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 tell for sure. Um, I'm certainly not going to throw them a minimum of $60 for a set that wouldn't even be here until when their shipping estimates, uh, December. That's eh, not too far. It's actually not as bad as I would have, would have expected. I was thinking it'd be sometime next year. Um, all you need is one month delay though. And it is so technically so that's Orbidice. That's Orbidice moving right along. Next up is Fossil Canyon. Pretty well funded, about $20,000 of its $5,000 goal. 484 backers, about two weeks left to pledge this one, which you can for $29. Yeah. So Fossil Canyon, a uh, super, super simple set collection type game. Um, in fact, they repeatedly stress that this is great for families. Uh, one of their main like reviews is like, hey, our family of like 5 to 15, our kids, 5 to 15, we can all play it together. Uh, it's a set collection game. You mix up all of the tarot-sized dinosaur cards, uh, shuffle them all up, discard uh, a set amount based on how many players are in the game. Then everybody draws, I think, six to start. And then you shuffle the rest into a vague, like, big, messy pile in the center of the table. A dig site, sir. A A dig site. Thank you. And you call it the dig site. You mix them into a big, shuffled, general pile and call it the dig site. Because that's that's how the world did it. You just... You just took a bunch of fossils and you took some dirt and you're like, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. All right, there we go. That's exactly. how the devil did it all exactly. right. Exactly. Sure yeah. is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how else would have been put there? I don't I, I don't know. On your Explain turn. Explain that to me, science. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it can. Um, on your turn, you draw a card from the dig site uh, and then you can trade cards uh, with other players. Uh, there's no limit to the number of cards you can trade, but each trade costs more cards. So your first trade is like a one to one. And then if that trade is successful, you do a two to one, three to one, so on and so forth. Uh, there is a phrase that was somewhere in here that made me a little confused, uh, because it said, uh, something about, uh, trading potentially getting you like an extra draw, uh, which seemed odd. Uh, yeah, right here. Uh, trade fossils, try and complete a skeleton. You can trade more than once, but each subsequent trade costs more fossils. Get a bonus dig if you succeed. So digging is the drawing. So is it every time you trade, you get to dig? So like, hey, trade me one to one. And by the way, know also that I'll get to draw another one for free. Um, Maybe. I, I can't but then, even... it's, then you get a two to one and then a three to one. I mean, I could see that being fine if... I feel like you'd struggle to make the first trade. Like... Well, I, f- I feel like if you struggle to make the first trade, then you're always, then I, I feel like everybody would struggle to make any trade whatsoever. So that, that's what I'm concerned about. I would say if that's true, just like that, or if it has to be a certain amount of trades you have to do, um, it would be similar to QE, like just the assumption of like the, you know, we need this to, for the game to function, we all it, have to agree to do this. Exactly. Yeah. So in, in the rule book, it says, in a separate area and you could possibly collect a bonus card and uh, if yeah a for, bonus for each trade or no if you completed one or more skeletons in step one or two so in that trade if you completed you would oh, then be you, able to dig a single bonus card from if, the dig site if you succeed uh, at trade the fossils set. to try and complete a skeleton 
get a bonus if you succeed. Okay. Just we're learn to read correctly. We're, we're reading the entire yeah, sentences. Well, it turns out the <laughs> sentence in the middle really throws that whole fucking <laughs> understanding of how that phrasing worked. Yeah. Can you understand? Like, it's the first sentence and then the second sentence and then the third sentence only refers to the first sentence. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, then step three, after you've done your trading, uh, you get to turn three of your cards face down. The rest go face up. Uh, the three that are face down are in your preparation lab uh, and are hidden from other players. Otherwise, everybody else gets to know the other cards you have in your hand so they know what things you potentially have to trade. Um, and you keep going in that uh, in that manner until the end of the game. Um, each species can be two, three, or four fossils uh, indicated like up in the top by like what chunk of the fossil and the card shows like, hey, here's an outline of the skeleton of this dinosaur. You have this part of the skeleton. You have this part. Uh, the cool thing, uh, coolest thing for me about this is the scoring. Uh, so it uses these cool little puzzle pieces. So uh, each player has their own little like uh, puzzle piece marker. Then you put those together to start the scoring area. Uh, and then as you complete a fossil, you get that fossil's requisite piece and put it on your uh, row of the puzzle. Um and they are proportional in size to how many visitors they attract to your museum. And so the scoring, you just always have to look at whose puzzle pieces are the furthest along uh, in in scoring to win. So some of them are teeny tiny. Uh, and then some of them, like the T-Rex, is pretty big and takes up a bunch of space. Uh, and that seems like a really cool visual uh, indicator of like who's where in the scoring and how close they are. And I mean, yeah, I'm going to assume that it has some sort of um, limiting factor of placement on those in order to, because it sounds like you're saying that just whoever has the longest museum wins, right? Yes. That you can't just be like, oh, well, I'm just going to have this one thing that anytime I get a large thing, I'm putting it on there. I'm assuming there's something else you have to do that would, would inhibit that. So the, the thing you're seeing there, so that's all of the four player colors. Oh. So red is top row, oh. green is bottom. So you oh, put okay. all of your dinosaurs on your row. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. And so it is just who has the longest I row I legitimately at the thought end. it was like, oh man, that's like four row, like four no. levels. I was like, no. how do you determine? <laughs> okay, that makes more sense then. And there's only a certain amount of each dinosaur. Yeah. Like the... Mm-hmm. Then, the, then yes, the, that is real the cool. The T-Rex is the biggest and then it's like brachiosaurus triceratops allosaurus ankylosaurus and then like yeah. the little old mosasaurus and dilophosaurus you know give you the smallest amount of points yes yeah. um and so like i was saying at the beginning of the game you erode is the mechanic for discarding a set amount of like cards out of the start so you might not know there might not be enough t-rex in there there might be no t-rex heads so none of the t-rexes can be finished um you don't know that's a gamble yep yeah. Also, did we mention that the game is only twenty bucks standard? I did. Okay. Yeah, I did. You can well, get it for twenty dollars. The most popular is twenty nine dollars. Yes. So yeah, uh, it does seem pretty simple. I could see how this would be a silly little fun card game, especially with like younger kids and stuff. Uh, and I mean, what kid doesn't like dinosaurs? The uh, the deluxe edition for ten bucks more. Those scoring pieces are now wood. Ah. Uh, and then you have a a. It comes with a bag for the wood. Scoring pieces. It seems like a reasonable ten dollar upgrade. Yeah, but also like a hundred percent, you don't need it, right? One hundred percent, you don't. So feel free to save thirty percent on the cost. Uh, this was also apparently co-developed with the Field Museum in Chicago, which is cool. Yeah, is that where Sue lives? That is. Yeah. Um, Sue being an awesome T-Rex fossil. The most complete fossil of a T-Rex ever found. I couldn't remember if it was most complete or largest. I want to say most complete. I'll buy that. Yeah. Um, in I, like South Dakota, Utah, I don't know, this general belt of the United States. <laughs> yeah, where the mountains are. Yeah. I, there was some story of like, it was some dude in a trailer living on this property and they wanted to like hunt around for things. And she was just walking by and it was just kind of in this hillside and be like, that's just a fucking T-Rex fossil in your fucking hillside, dude. And they had to like fight with him about like land rights for like years to be able to even oh, go imagine. look at it or something. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that's, that's my T-Rex fossil that I come to look at when I drink beer at night. <laughs> 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 Fuck off, yeah. man. I don't want it to go away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Fossil uh, Canyon, uh, really straightforward set collection game. Um, 
looks looks kind of interesting, especially for only like twenty to thirty dollars, depending where you go deluxe. Um, but you can go check it out uh, yourself and uh, make your own decision. Um, I didn't see if there's anything about like more about their partnership with the Field Museum. Like, I don't At know the if bottom any of there, go. Well, right I didn't there. know. Uh, oh, so you could also pledge to buy extra games that will be donated to the Field Museum. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, they have no shipping cost, and uh, so yeah, so you can if you want to support the Field Museum, you can send them some extra games to I don't know use at the Field Museum somehow. Yeah, give away. I don't know extra copies to sell in the gift shop. Sure, <laughs> that's Fossil Canyon. Next up is. Bar uh, Heroes of Barcadia, very well funded, almost $400,000, 4,800 backers and three weeks left to pledge, which you can at its most popular pledge level of $80. Yeah, of its $50,000 goal. You didn't even say that. No, yeah, 50, 50, 50K. Anyhow, it's, a, it's a drinking game. It's a drinking game. Or you use your beers as your player pieces. Yeah. So uh, so this is like a vague uh, <clears throat> RPG dungeon crawl. Two to six players, 30 to 90 minutes. Uh, a band of monsters has stolen all the drinks in the kingdom. <laughs> yup. Uh, except for the ones that represent your character, I guess. I don't know. It's because you're already liquored up. There you go. Uh, so you start off uh, with like a center tile uh, that's like a big hex, and then you build out uh using basically like coasters they're like hex coasters uh face down uh this whole big uh board um and then starting with whoever's the first player uh you move out and explore the dungeon that you've built with these coasters so uh on your turn you flip an adjacent area to explore it and you face off against whatever it is if it's a monster you fight you roll a d20 uh, if you roll the monster's level or higher, you beat it, uh, in which case you get a power-up and or loot card, and then you move your glass onto that tile. Uh, and you keep just exploring that way um, over the course of the game. Uh, you're ultimately trying to defeat the bosses, uh, including, like, the mega boss. Uh, so when you do a boss, the only difference there is you're rolling against another player at the table. They roll for the monster, and you roll, and you need to beat their roll. Um, pretty straightforward type stuff. Um, if you lose a battle, you have to drink a part of your beer. So they, this game comes with pint glasses. I couldn't tell if they were glass or if they're like plastic, but it comes with drinking cups that have health markers going down them. And so you take three damage. You have to drink down three health levels of your, your drink. Um, plastic cup, plastic cup. Okay. That would, cause it'd be a shame if it was glass and then you get it shipped to you and you're just like, Oh, well all of these are broken. So yeah, I'm going to need a refund. Um, and I don't know if they're full. Does it say how big they are? I didn't see that either. Uh, all of see on all of the gifts, it looks like they're using full fucking pint glasses, like real glass pint glasses. So it's a little bit deceiving. Um, so I don't know. You can keep looking for that. I'll keep describing yes. the game. Uh, loot cards you can use to boost uh, your attack or to like affect your opponent's ones. Seems very Munchkin esque in that regard. Uh, Power ups go in front of you again. Very Munchkin esque. Um, they give you different abilities and things. You can have up to three of them at a time. And then ultimately you're trying to find the drink horde, uh, which is somewhere in the dungeon. You have to have all three of your power-ups, uh, equipped before you can go fight the grand drink guardian. Uh, if you beat the guardian, you win the game. So everybody's scouring the dungeon, looking for the guardian. And then whoever beats the guardian wins. Um, they say there's a lot more to the game, different traps, portals, duels, things like that. A little bit of teamwork here and there. Um, they've got a bunch of different uh, add-ons and stretch goals that they've unlocked. Um, some of the things like the coin of conflict resolution is $8. It's a little coin. The front says, I drink. The back says, you drink. So you can just, all right, you know, we can't agree on what to do or we tied on a roll. We'll flip. Whatever. Um, <laughs> they've got other add-ons for things like custom uh, bottle openers, which had mentioned on those uh, something about like, uh, they call them the potion opener. Access your health potions quickly. Uh, I don't know if that means that you can crack a new beer to refill your glass to stay alive if you run out of health. So this game can technically just go forever with no player elimination until somebody beats the boss, no matter how drunk everyone gets. I mean, that seems like you, that's what you'd want to do in a drinking game. So. I mean, it is a drinking game. Um, 
They uh, they also have another uh, stretch goal that is a uh, stra- a straw set, so you can take you, this game to a like a brewery, for instance, and get a beer there in their glass, and then you put the straw in, and the straw has the health markers like out That's, on the outside. I like that. That's better. Um, so then you just have to, you know, you don't even have to drink through the straw. You can just drink your beer like normal, but drink it down to the health level on the straw. But just, beware of those crazy hazy beers because you won't be able to see it. Yeah, you're not, <laughs> not going to play this with like a fucking stout. You'll, you'll, you'll never know what level you're at. Can't play with a flash- Rasputin or anything like yeah. that. Uh, get your I, flashlight. Out. I mean, it does. It does look like the health marker is above, like above the line you need to drink yeah. to. So you just got to drink until you see the health mark. Yep. And then uh, you, you, you forget need. about it, and you're just thirsty. Oh God, no! I'm half dead. Yeah. <laughs> what have I done? Uh, they have a bunch of other add-ons like mats These drinks and are literally uh, killing me. <laughs> dice trays. They did. Are they are close to hitting their stretch goal? Uh, did they? And they just haven't updated? Okay, no, they're close. So they're 30, 396,000. If they hit 400,000, the rule book will be laminated, and they make a big point throughout all of this of saying the rule book is the only thing that's not waterproof. Well, it's very close to the rule book also being waterproof. Um, so all of the, uh, like, uh, terrain room hexes, mm-hmm. the, the pieces that you're putting your beer glass on, or water glass, if you don't want to play this with alcohol yes that's um, true you could yeah you can play this drinking game with water um or just go with liquid pcp if you really want to go have some fun lsd fucking just a big glass of lsd well, I, now we're i can't imagine now we're how, mandy i can't imagine how expensive a pint glass full of lsd would be a lot <laughs> also good god you would die mm-hmm. i mean you brought you wouldn't you would just trip forever have you seen the movie mandy yes but that's nobody, what would happen that's what would happen that's what would happen <laughs> um so yeah a uh, bunch of different stretch goals add-ons things like that uh that are all kind of cool they've got roll 20 integration uh one of the pledges includes like a copy of this for roll 20 which is like an online rpg playing thing i don't know why they went with roll 20 of all the things uh um, that brand recognition man sure i mean it just tells me they're not very familiar with board games because i feel like any number of board game things would be more applicable. Like Roll Twenty is very much an RPG thing. They're, yeah. they're leaning heavy into the RPG side of this drinking game. So, yeah. you, so you can upgrade the plastic to glass if you so choose. Well, there you go. How much does that cost? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, it's just an FAQ because I still don't know how big these cups are. They seem human hand sized. They do seem human hand sized, but. I can only assume that's a regular pint glass then. It it's certainly at least a twelve ounce pint glass, I feel like. Uh you will need twelve fluid ounces of sweet liquid life to hit the full mark. Okay, there you go. So they are they are your traditional pint glass. Yeah. Yeah, well, it looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen far worse drinking board games, so Yeah. For sure. So that's it for uh news and Kickstarters. So moving on to some listener feedback. There's no listener feedback. You SOBs. Rude. Poor Jeff. Had to listen to Zach read all those BGG responses on the Friday episode, and then he didn't even get a single email response. This is true. Rude. If you would like to get a hold of us, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. You can send us an email. Emails at milehighgameguys.com. Which Jeff will surely appreciate. You can also find us over on Twitter, where I tweet under at MHGameGuys. I am Zach underscore MHGG. I am Jeff underscore MHGG. Uh, we have our Instagram account, at MHGameGuys, Facebook.com slash MHGameGuys. For a website, I recommend going to PunchboardMedia.com, which we are proud members of. And over there, you can find episode posts from us with show notes, including links to all the news and Kickstarter items we just talked about, so you can go check them out for your own selves. Uh, as well as links to things like our Slack channel, where you can come and participate in all manner of ridiculous discussions, uh, including like making fun of Boyd for the tiny fish he caught, uh, which at least he finally caught a fish. He's been trying for a while. Proud of you, Boyd. <laughs> Good job. Uh, our BGG Guild, Guild number 2731, where there's things like being able to participate in the top 10 list. We had a thread up there where some people gave us their top 10 games that got them through the pandemic. I'm sure there will almost certainly maybe possibly be a thread for Clinic that we're going to be streaming this Friday over on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv. Like tomorrow or MHK today guys. or yesterday. I don't know. Whenever this episode comes out. <laughs> yeah. So Friday, 
Uh, hey, the, this last one came out on Thursday. Sure did. Came out on no, so Thursday. I'm Friday. We're streaming. Okay. And then okay. I was trying to do the math because today's Monday the 14th. Mm-hmm. So that'd be the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th? That would be the 18th. So yes. Friday the 18th, we'll be streaming clinic uh, here in studio. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, these episodes are sponsored by you, the listeners, via our Patreon, patreon.com slash uh, Mile High Game Guys. That one didn't get the MH abbreviation. It's the full fucking long phrase. Yeah. Um. Yeah, if you want to support the show, you can go pledge over there. If you pledge a dollar, Jeff will berate you based on whatever knowledge he has of you. So if you give us <laughs> nothing to go on, he's just going to make shit up. Yes. It may or may not be accurate. Yes. If you give us a little bit of information, you know, he might make fun of your hot, sweaty hands that you <laughs> used to sail around oh, in no, the you... UK. <laughs> well, it was Luke, and I was like, cool cool hands, Luke? Hot, yeah. yeah. Hot and hands. I was like, well, you are not cool. You are hot. Hot hands. Hot, sweaty it, hands. It's been one of the best nicknames to come of the a, I mean, $1 rants. I have a lot of nicknames out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for all the different ways to get a hold of us. Uh, as always, we do... I don't know where the... As always. That was going back <laughs> to the sponsorship thing. As always, this is the end of the episode. Yeah. I do really want to thank everybody who supports us over on Patreon and all of our fans who listen to the show, who interact with us on Slack, who... Do anything even watch us on Twitch. Watch us on Twitch. You do anything even resembling interact with us. Um it 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 keeps this going. So yeah. uh, now we're back in studio. So we're we're getting back in the swing of things. And and the Patreon will, I'm sure, get a desperate refresh. Yes. It is a, it is very high on my list of things that I desperately need to accomplish for the show. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna we're gonna finish recording and I'm gonna edit that top ten episode because that's number one on the list. And then yeah. I don't know, maybe this week I'll get to number two. We could record like a new video for the Patreon with we all this fancy new equipment that we have. We also 100% need to do that. Yeah, 100%. Because the last one was recorded in an awkward bedroom at my old apartment with a mattress leaned against Studio the wall. Studio 1B. Oh, yeah. Studio 1B. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 1A being the kitchen yes. in that apartment. Right. So this is 2B. Yeah. This 2B. is 2B. Yeah. 2B, yes. So. I mean, 2B.1, really, because it's, the, it's the second version of this space. Yeah. Because oh the, yeah, two A being downstairs, mm-hmm, then yeah. two B being up here, and then two B point one. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> two B point one five because the first couple didn't have the new fancy lights That's that we true. got that couple in. Yeah, yeah, it's a so. lot of revisions, <laughs> constant <laughs> improvement. Continuous improvement. I do. I, that's a big thing at work. They're harping on it all the time. <laughs> the leadership is all about continuous improvement, and that's that's what we're about here at the Mile High Game, guys. So, and oh boy, do we have a lot that we can improve. It's just, we, yeah. Hey, we leave is, so much room for activities. It, so much room for activities. So much room for improvement. Yeah, it's really you know the right way to go. So, uh, yeah, that's it. As always. I've been your host, Adrian. I am still Zach. And I'm Jeff and Clank. Bye. 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 Punchboard Media. Where we all bring something to the table. Pull up a chair at punchboardmedia.com.